Uh, hello everyone. Uh, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to convert any scanned document or digital file, uh, that's a Word document, a JPG or a PDF, uh, into an accessible format. Uh, this is a recommended skill for parents, teachers and teachers assistants of students with any print disability. Uh, now this is one of the most powerful and convenient ways that we can empower our students to read documents without direct assistance. It allows our students to use their accessibility software or make any modifications to text in order to read the documents and to navigate tables. Um, it can also clean up a document and make it easier to view for everybody. Okay, so the first step is to have your scan files or your digital documents in a folder that you're going to work out of. Now there are lots of different operating systems and there's lots of different kinds of scanners. So in this uh, tutorial I don't have time to cover all the different ways that you could choose to do this. Um, if there's much interest I will do a module later on using your scanner and one on file management. Uh, but for this particular tutorial you can see here that I have my files sitting here in a folder that I've called scans. Uh, I've got two documents here. Uh, one is a typical textbook page with some text and some tables and uh, a picture there. And the other one that I've got uh, is a typical another typical textbook page that's actually quite a poor photocopy. We're going to clear this up and, uh, and, and make it really nice for our student. Okay, so now we're going to run OmniPage. Uh, there's a couple of different ways to do it. Uh, basically, you just uh, click and run the shortcut. Now, when you installed OmniPage, it might have put the shortcut here on the desktop. Alternatively, we could find it anywhere in the Start button. Uh, you might find it in, if we look at the programs, and we go down to, uh, where is it, into Nuance, OmniPage, and there it is there. OmniPage. Uh, alternatively, if you're in Windows 7, we can just click on the search button. We just go Omni here, and uh, OmniPage will be right there. So I'll just click it up. Right. So when OmniPage loads, you should be looking at a screen that's pretty close to this. Uh, we're going to stop the wizard here. We don't need that and maximize out the screen. So this is the work area that we're looking at uh, for OmniPage. We'll be able to do everything from here. Alright, so the first thing we're going to tell OmniPage to do is we're going to direct OmniPage to load up our scans. So to do that we click this uh, button here to load our files. Uh, which I'll give it a click now. Now you want to navigate to your scans directory. I'm automatically on it, but I'll just re-navigate to it. And I'm pretty sure I've put mine in work, current work, omnipage module, and scans. Okay, so we're looking at this screen here. Now we can drag and select uh, to load multiple pages on and we can load either images here or documents. So if you haven't got a scan page but you're in fact working with a PDF or a Word document you would just uh, and you couldn't see the uh, files in your window you would just click the documents tab. Uh, I don't have any documents in there though at this stage. Okay, So once again I'll drag and select my documents here and I will press OK. All right, and I'll just uh, reset the view real fast. Okay, so you should be looking at something like that when you've done it. You've got your scan pages right here on the side, and uh, you've got your, in your main window you can see a picture of your scans. Okay, so our next step is to tell OmniPage which sections of the document are text, which ones are tables, and which ones are pictures. Uh, if we draw these zones properly to start with, OmniPage will have a much better time uh, deciphering um, our document and 
uh, getting it all out nice and clear. So the first thing I'm going to do is go hover over this button here and it gives me a bunch of different choices. So we're only going to use the top three uh, in this tutorial, uh, the rest are more advanced. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw text zones over these uh, sections of the document that are clearly just text. So let's have a go. Right, I'm just going to draw a box over this and tell this this is text. There we go. Um, you can see in the top left hand corner uh, what kind of zone you've selected. Uh, the next part I'm going to do is the tables. So this is the table button. Click that. And we're going to draw that over here. Like, like so. And we're going to draw another one over here. Great. Now this third zone is a picture zone. And as you can see, a bit of this table is actually going into uh, the the picture. So we want to actually make sure OmniPage knows which part is the picture and which part is the table. So OmniPage is quite clever. We can actually draw uh, two boxes over this. So we draw two regular size boxes and we actually create what's called an irregular zone for an irregular shape. So I'm going to draw one box there and then I'm actually going to draw another box and make sure it overlaps with the other box and OmniPage will be clever enough to know that I mean it's all one with any luck. Let's see how we go. There we go. So that is now a... Uh, the text zone has been highlighted, the two tables and we've got the picture zone here and I'm just going to get this caption... Uh, yeah, the caption underneath the picture there and I'm just going to go back to text and I'm going to highlight that it's best when you do these documents to uh, do things in order of the way in which you think they'll be read. So this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, and this one under the picture is number five. Uh, if you ever make a mistake, you can easily select a box and delete it. Uh, so now that uh, we've zoned the document, it's going to be time to do the OCR process. Um, however, I'll just very quickly get rid... Uh, you can see now this is how I've set it up and this is perfect. But what I might do just to show you is uh, OmniPage has an automatic zoning... Uh, oh, sorry. Okay. OmniPage has an automatic zoning facility and we'll just see if uh, we can use it. So I'm going to delete all my selection and we're going to see how clever OmniPage is when it looks at this document. I recommend doing it all yourself manually in most cases, but you might find that if the document is really clear like this one, uh, perhaps if we do do the automatic button, which is there, we'll get and get something really similar. Let's have a look. So this is just the automatic process from pressing the second button. Okay, and it's just uh, asked me a couple of things, but I'll... Uh, this is the proofreader, so it works just like a spell checker. Uh, so that it's actually got that right. I can see a picture of what OmniPage is looking at, and then it gives me a box saying, is this what it is? It actually is perfect, so I'm going to say change it. That's great. Okay, so looking at this, it's not too bad. I think that's uh, pretty well done. I would probably change the selection here and just review that. like so, but um, yeah, I, I do recommend doing the manual rather than the automatic. So in any event, once you've done the manual selection, uh, you just press that button again, the Perform OCR button. It says automatic, but don't worry about that. Just press the Perform OCR button, and then you should be looking at uh, the layout of what it thinks the document looks like. So to do that, you've got these three sections up the top here. You've got page image, you've got text editor, and you've got help. So we're going to look at the text editor to see what our document's going to look like in a Word document. And here it is. So this is nice and accessible. You can see you can mouse your way through all the text. All the text is really uh, clear. And if uh, a student wants to use a uh, speech or zooming or enlarge the font, uh, they're free to do do that. Uh, you can see that these tables have now been formatted into proper tables, uh, which is very handy, um, especially if the student's are using uh, screen reading software. And this picture down the bottom is an irregular shaped picture, and it's uh, right there. Now, if you're uh, 
if you're servicing a student with no vision, it might be uh, more trouble than it's worth to put that uh, picture in, in which case we could just press the delete key over this and we get rid of the picture altogether and we just keep the text on the document where I'm going to pretend that my student at this stage uh, is going to use his vision, so I just pressed Control Z to undo. Great, so that's the end of setting the zones. It's, uh, it's not too hard. Uh, we're going to get on to the next step now. Okay, I just wanted to uh, show you on this rather poorly photocopied document how to use the proofreader and the, uh, the last document that we looked at, uh, the quality was too good uh, to recognise. So when you, you get a, a, a bad quality document or a, a poor quality scan like this, uh, the process to recognise all this text will be a little bit more involved. So I've set all the zones here. I've got an irregular zone and got my pictures and, and, and uh, I, I've correctly uh, identified each zone on this document. So the next step is I'm going to press this Perform OCR button and when this is finished where the proofreader is going to come up. Okay, so this is a little bit more of an in-depth look at the proofreader. I might not have a look at the whole document with you, but we'll go through a few things. Uh, so I can see here that the, uh, it's pointing at this section here and it wants to know have I, ha, there, is it understanding comma full stop the. So that's wrong. I'm going to change it to understanding the which is what it looks like to me. So let's change that. Okay, and then let's put in some uh, dots here because the uh, there's you know some uh, uh, some irregular shapes there. So I'm getting rid of that and changing it. Okay, uh, ESD. We might get rid of this. It thought this was an apostrophe when it's probably just a little mark. Um, okay. Um, yep. Uh, this is the word here, as we can see, this was really badly photocopied there. So I can tell you that this actually says segregation. Um, and we'll change that. Okay. Segregation, there is a comma there. So we've got that right. Uh, now, this was segregation, comma assassination and uh, uh, protect uh, probably obviously it's not an ideal uh, copy here but I can see with my vision up here looking at the document that that's what uh, they're trying to say now that looks pretty good I'm going to change all of that great uh, culture uh, cultures yep I can see there it's an S uh, so I wouldn't be able to recognize it, but when we look at it with our eyes, we can. It was right there. It was right there. It was right there. Okay, here we go. The red part on the thing that it's looking at is what it's asking me to translate. So two rivers run. Uh, oh yeah, I can press in and zoom in and out too. So I've got two rivers run their course. And we'll change that. Yeah, that's right. Um, that's not a comma. Yeah, didn't quite work that one out. When the waters... Oh, Waters will be one. Okay, so you get the picture. Um, I'm not going to keep going. I oh, know. Look, that's done. All right. So now we'll have a look at how that went on the old text editor, and that is much better. So that's that's pretty good. I can see here. Uh, there's a couple of little mistakes down here in the document. Um, let me see. So in this section, this is this works exactly like Word. So you can just uh, experiment around and fiddle with it a little bit uh, and you can actually make it uh, perfect. Let me see, how do I do this? 
I'll lower the font size to maybe 10. I mean, that's not perfect, but that'll do for my student. My student will be much happier reading this than just that terrible scan. All right, so now uh, we're up to the last part, which will be saving our document. I just thought I'd run that little brief tutorial on the proofreader. Okay, so this is our final step now. Uh, now that we're looking at a document that we're pretty happy to give to a student, uh, we go to the Save To button, or Export Results, and we give it a click. Now here we can choose where we're going to put our uh, document. I'm going to stick it on the desktop, but if you've got a USB, you could navigate down into Computer, and you could uh, locate your USB and just save it straight into there to give to a student. Um, I'm going to save it to the desktop and the idea is I'll be emailing this to my student. Um, now I'll come down here and I'm going to uh, give it a name. I'll call it say Yothu Yindi Worksheet for this particular one. Um, now I can save it uh, as a text, an image or multiple. Uh, I'm going to go for multiple here and I can choose all sorts. I've got all sorts of uh, options actually. I might go to text. Um, so with these options, if you're using a Macintosh version of OmniPage, you can just choose a Pages document. Otherwise, uh, Pages can interpret Word documents pretty easily. So I recommend in most cases you're going to use a Word document. The only case where it's not a good idea would be if you're using a screen reading student who has no vision, uh, in which case some of the visual uh, layout might get in the way, in which case you might save as one of these a text file or a rich text file. Um, a rich text file is probably better because you'll be able to keep your tables. Uh, but for this one, I'm going to save it as a Word document. I'll do that. I'll just... Uh, re put the name in again, Yothu Yindi Worksheet. Okay, so I'm ready to go. I'm just going to press the OK button. And I think that's saved. Let's check. There it is here. Double click on it. And here is our document. Uh, looking pretty schmick. Uh, as you can see, it's lost all those uh, elements that it used to have in regards to, you know, the grey backgrounds and the garbled text. Uh, this is looking much better. Uh, that's now ready to be sent to a student. Uh, so, uh, congratulations. Hopefully, along with the text module I've given you and this video, uh, you should be well on your way to creating accessible documents. Uh, please feel free to provide me with any feedback. This is only a tutorial in uh, the making. Uh, thanks for your time and uh, congratulations on getting this far.